Yesterday, arguably the worst edition of the Power 5 ever. No sugarcoating it, one iota. Gotta get through it. Today, I'm gonna cover World Series Game 4, two of Tuesday's three college football matchups, as well as both games uh, of the NBA's doubleheader on TNT. As a reminder, you can always comment down below with your thoughts on my selections. If you want to rip me for yesterday, you can do that. It's fine. Also, if you'd be so kind, though, to hit that thumbs up, your support is always greatly appreciated. Here we go for Tuesday. Number one, since most believe the World Series is all over, but shouting at this point, let's start there. Yankees are a minus 140 favorite to win game four. However, yeah, uh, the Dodgers have yet to announce a starting pitcher tonight. I'm going to go against the conventional wisdom and back the Yanks as favorites in this spot. Look, obviously, they're not going to win the series. The only team, as Yankees fans know, to ever overcome a 3-0 series deficit was Boston back in the 2004 ALCS. Only one other team down 0-3 has even forced a Game 7. But I don't see this Yankees team getting swept. For the record, we've not seen a sweep in the World Series since 2012. Uh, I know when teams are up 3-0, typically the series doesn't go past five games, but uh, I think the Yankees win tonight. I know they're hitting just 186 in the series, including four of 20 when runners are in scoring position, but that can only improve. Dodgers go to the bullpen game. Uh, they are 2-1 and one the three previous times they've done this in the postseason, but no real bulk innings eater tonight after using up six relievers tonight, or last night, I should say, uh, they used six relievers. Three of those six threw at least 22 pitches. Luis Heal starting for the Yanks. I know con there's control issues with Heal, and he's made just one start this postseason, but the team is 20-10 and 10 in his 30 starts this season. I know it's a complete contrarian play. That's what we do here on the Power Five sometimes. I just think the Yankees are too good to be swept. I'm going to draw a line in the sand and take them. Number two, New Mexico State, FIU, under 44. Let's go to college football. Conference USA, we we're very good in the midweek. We've been very good in the midweek Conference USA uh, games the last two weeks. Under is the way the money has been trending here. Second week in a row, FIU is playing at Pitbull Stadium. Hey. Uh, last Tuesday, I told you to bet FIU plus the points and take the under against Sam Houston. Both those bets hit in a 10-7 loss. FIU has scored 24 points or fewer in four straight games. Uh, and, again, and against all but one FBS opponent this year, they've scored 24 or less. In, uh, so, so obviously the offense not very good. It only averages 4.6 yards per play, uh, which is actually higher than New Mexico State, who's bottom 10 in the country in that category. FIU... They have a big edge defensively in this matchup in terms of yards per play, but I don't want to be laying this many points with a Panthers team that has already lost outright to UTEP as a seven-point favorite, albeit that was on the road. Now, New Mexico State is coming off a bye. They last played two Tuesdays ago, upset Louisiana Tech and Las Cruces, winning 33-30 as 12-point home dogs. Remember, that was another Power 5 winner. Told you to take the points there. Uh, one thing to note about that game, though, it went to double overtime, was tied 24 uh, at 24 at the end of regulation. New Mexico State's top 24 in regulation only one time all season. Both these teams have unsettled quarterback situations. Thus, it's hard to see a lot of points being scored tonight. So under 44 it is. Uh, I'm going to take the four with Louisiana tonight at Texas State. This is the Sun Belt, not Conference USA for those keeping score at home. The Raging Cajuns are the only Sun Belt team without a conference loss right now. And uh, as a matter of fact, their only straight-up loss was 41-33 to Tulane, one of the best G5 teams. And Louisiana had a plus 60 edge in total yards in that game. Since then, the Raging Cajuns have gone to Wake Forest and won. That's a nice uh, win over a Power 4 school. And all three of Louisiana's conference wins have been by exactly 10 points. They were favored in all three. Uh, they're an underdog here. Texas State, though, has been a disappointment thus far, I would say, based on the fact they're 4-3 and three straight up despite going off as the favorite in all seven games. Bobcats blew a second-half lead here at home versus Arizona State. That was a weekday game earlier in the year, and they've lost outright as double-digit road favorites to both Sam Houston and Old Dominion. Key here, Louisiana offense top 20 nationally in yards per play going against a Texas State defense that is top 20 in yards per play allowed. So what's the difference maker going to be in this game? I think the Louisiana defense, which has given up by far the fewest number of explosive plays in the Sun Belt. In fact, the Raging Cajuns have allowed 11 fewer 10-plus yard plays than every other defense in this conference. I know it's their fourth time in five weeks playing on the road, but feels like we're destined for a close game where the dog could win outright. Give me the four with Louisiana. All right, turning to the NBA. First game of the TNT doubleheader is Mavs T-Wolves. I like the under 222.5. That's down from the open. Second night of a back-to-back -back for Dallas. They won 
110-102 last night against Utah. That game stayed well under the total of 232.5. Luka Doncic uh, did not shoot the ball well last night. 5 of 22 overall, including 1 of 9 from 3. Kyrie Irving was scoreless until the final minute of the first quarter. But even with the, both those guys likely shooting better tonight, I don't see Dallas necessarily having a big offensive game against a Minnesota team that can clearly defend well. Tired legs could be a factor for the Mavs in the second night of a back-to-back. They already play at a bottom five pace. Meanwhile, the T-Wolves, they're going to be pretty dialed in here defensively for what is a big revenge spot. The Mavs eliminated them, remember, from the playoffs last season. These teams are combined four and two to the under thus far. I also like the under in the nightcap. Pelicans at Warriors number here is 217 and a half, also down from the open. Key to the handicap here, obviously, no Steph Curry for the Warriors. He's out with an ankle injury. Honestly, even if they had Curry, Golden State does not match up well with the Pelicans, who uh, held opponents to the third lowest three-point percentage in the league last season. Now, New Orleans is dealing with some injuries as well. No Murray, no Murphy. This is a team that scored just 105 and 103 in a pair of games at Portland. Portland, not exactly a defensive stalwart. Pelicans were 50, 37, and 2 to the under last season. Low-scoring games on TNT tonight. Under in Pelicans Warriors. Let's do a recap of the Power 5 tonight. You obviously all hate this play, but I'm taking the Yankees in Game 4 of the World Series to stay alive. Number 2, New Mexico State, FIU under 44. Number 3, Louisiana plus 4 at Texas State. Number 4, Mavs T-Wolves under 222.5. Number 5, Pelicans Warriors under 217.5. Again, comment down below with your thoughts and questions. Let me know what you're betting on Tuesday when it comes to the World Series, college football, or NBA $5 Tuesday at wagertalk.com. That means you can grab a best bet from yours truly for just $5. Despite last Saturday's poor results, I am still number one in college football this season. 42-21, and 21, my last 63 college football plays going back to last season. That includes 13-5, and five, my last 18 this season. My $5 play will be available later this morning. And that's going to do it for Tuesday's edition of the Power 5. Hope you enjoyed it. If so, smash that like button. You can always catch me later on Wager Talk today as well. Until next time, let's cash some tickets.